our lesson dealing with conducting services. Uh, before we pray and move forward, uh, you may feel you may never find yourself in this position, uh, but we will go through this, and it's a fill in the blank, and I will give you what needs to be put in the blanks, and go from there. You're cold today. No, you're not coming down, you're going up. So, yes, yes. So we'll pray, ask God to lead us. Thank you for this day, Lord. You're faithful and true. Lead today in these sessions that we're having. Thank you for each that is joining us via Skype or watching. Lord, on YouTube, these that are here in class, bless today, encourage and strengthen in Jesus. Amen. So, if you may not be responsible to actually lead an entire service or organize, you may be involved in helping with a service. If it be prayer or offering or uh, leading in songs, uh, those are only just a few things. You could be asked to do some other things. So, leading a service, it involves teamwork, working together, also knowing how to transition from one part of the service to another. As in our notes here, it says it needs to connect. When we are leading services, one part needs to lead to another. There is a progression that it's building up to when the Word of God is going to be preached. I simply use the term connecting the dots. And that's very important because sometimes in a transition from a person doing one ministry to the next, things can be lost, or what is happening can be lost in the shuffle. The Bible does tell us that the Spirit of God is sensitive. In a sense, it's like a dove. A dove is a bird that can be just easily, you make a movement, and the dove is gone. So when we are um, entertaining the presence of God, we want to make sure what we do as human beings is helping to facilitate, continuing to entertain the presence of God, uh, and being prepared and being organized can help us to do that. So, if you are leading the actual service, or another term is convening, you're involved, pray, seek God, and be prepared. Uh, by also, if you are involved in leading in a church service, let me ask, I think you know what I mean by leading in a church service, okay? Because sometimes you get to doing something, you know what you're talking about, and if people have it, they want, what are, lead what? How do I lead a service, okay? So that means you're, you're up front uh, helping um, and direct the service as well. So even though you may be involved in a service every week. You may find yourself you're involved every other week. Don't just kind of like, I know what I'm doing. I will tell you that even in church work, uh, you can get to doing something so often, it becomes routine, and you know how to do it. Uh, I've seen people that they have the right skill and get up and sing, and it's not so much because the anointing is they know how what we call to work a crowd. They know what to do, what to say, how to work a crowd. So you have to be careful. You may do this often, but you have to be careful that it doesn't become a habit. Because when you're leading, uh, you want to be fresh. You want to be connected with what God is going to be doing in the service. All right? Uh, be alert. For when you're going to be taking part in the service. Never feel what you're going to be doing in the service is not important and don't come unprepared. Did they not do that be aware? Uh what point two? We're we're gonna we're gonna kind of go put the fill in the blanks here in just a minute. Now, so let me just use an illustration with that in being prepared, knowing what you're supposed to do. Now, here at New Life, other Yes. Hello? Yes? We, we don't have any of the paperwork. Okay, the scan and set. Was well, email brand go print out with this? Oh. Uh, okay. 
Like, what are you just paying your phone? Here's what I'll do. It, um, are you able to open it? Sorry, I need to talk this way. Are you able to open it? I've got it open. Okay, here's what we'll do is if you go ahead and open it, I can even send another copy like this with the blanks filled in, okay? Do, do you have this? Conducting services? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is is I'm going to just fill have them fill in the blank. So as we go along, I'll read that we're not down to the bottom yet. B blank and blank. That doesn't sound very good, blank and blank. Uh, uh, but when we go through that, I will tell what to put in those blanks. Right. I'll just get the notepad now, right? The okay. Notepad All right. Good. Sorry about that. It's all right. Okay, so let's back up. Um, Peyton, you know, sometimes you kind of have to watch because I can't see if they, they're doing this for you. You guys usually point out too. Okay. All right. So so here, here's what I'll do. Maybe Callum is responsible. i got to get back over here. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Callum is responsible. It's Sunday morning. Or when do you do midweek service? Thursday? Um, or Wednesday, or do you know? You, you sure? Uh, if I call Pastor Thursday. B, Calvin Sunday. All right, okay. All right. Let's say Sunday morning, because it's more of a structure type. And I know sometimes Wednesday nights can be a little more loose or flexible. But let's say this Sunday, Calvin is in charge of everything up to the preaching. Who's going to be doing singing? The schedule's made up, so he has to choose who's going to open with prayer. If they're doing that, he may do that. We already have down who's going to be involved in the singing and leading the worship. Who's going to be receiving the offering, taking prayer needs. Maybe there's something else that needs to be done different that Sunday. Who is going to do that? By the way, you don't have to have somebody different doing each one of those things. Because you will find it can take a lot of time uh, transitioning from one person to the next. Uh, if it means anything, in the last few meetings we've had here, staff meetings, I've told them we've had too many people involved in the service. One opening, then we have our praise and worship, then somebody's taking offering, somebody's taking prayer, somebody else is doing too much. It's too much time, and also it can break the consistency of what is happening in the service. It can, it can hinder the flow instead of helping with what God is doing. So, in saying all that, Callum comes to me and he says, can you open with prayer, scripture reading on Sunday morning? Uh, Elizabeth, we're asking you to do prayer needs and can you receive the offering as well? So when Callum begins to do that to us, I, you know, I'm, just, I'm just open with prayer and scripture. I'll just, oh God will give me something when I get up there. No, you want to be able to be in prayer that, that when you come Sunday morning, it may be one scripture that you're going to be reading. It may be a couple of scriptures, but Lord, we're setting the tone for the service. That, that first few minutes sets the tone for the service. It sets the atmosphere. And it is, it is uncanny. If you don't get it right, it can take 20 minutes to get the thing back on track. It, it, so that's why it's important. Does that mean if I'm going to be opening with prayer and scripture, I'm going to go on a 21-day fast? And No, but be spiritual. Be thinking, God, this week, I'm going to be opening up the service on Sunday. Give me a word. Help me to, when I open the service, the right scripture to read and as we pray. So when I'm done with that, I just kind of move out of the way. And Callum may be leading songs that Sunday. I don't need to be saying Callum's going to come and lead us in worship, and he's a great worship leader, and his mama was, and his granny was, and his uncle, and his kids, if they keep doing what they're doing, no, you don't need all that nonsense. No. You just kind of move over, and Calvin comes in, and people just start leading people in worship. Because what's happening is, hopefully, if I've, I've opened it up right, he comes along and just picks this up a little more, okay? And it's a transition, and that's tricky. That sometimes can be tricky how to do that right. Just slide right in and just you just take off. You lead us in praise and worship. We've already set it up. You're going to be singing, Our God is an awesome God before we take prayer needs. That's the last song that's down. You're going to be singing. 
And so Elizabeth is going to be doing prayer needs. And so we're starting to sing, our God is an awesome God. And Elizabeth says, oh, I need to run out and get something out of my coat pocket <laughs> or whatever. And you're up there, we sing it 30 times, our God is an awesome God, until she comes back again. So it's a clue. It's a little thing so Elizabeth knows, I've got to get ready. Each church is different. It may be that we're the church that may be saying you need to be coming up to the side and get ready. There's nobody. Sister Elizabeth is going to come lead us in prayer. It's Caleb is done and he just kind of moves out and Elizabeth just steps in. Now here's the other thing too you want to take note. Let us say that Elizabeth does not sing well. Now I'm not saying that Elizabeth. Just okay. up. Okay. So you're up there singing and you leave her with a song and she may not like, don't do that. I don't, I just don't do well. Well, you close it out and she comes up and picks that up and moves on with prayer, offering. And so what happens is just, it's just, da, da, da. You know. Um, now, in, in, in this as well, you know, you know, Elizabeth comes up and as we take needs to the Lord, and she may encourage people how to pray and why we need to pray. But what happens is in leading the service, whatever you're doing, it's very, you're, you're like connecting this. And the idea is, we start here. That's the start of the service. All right? And then we just start this way. We just want to keep moving it up. But sometimes because we do a lot of endless chatter, we do all kinds of stuff, we just kind of go like this. And whoever has to come back, it's up here, we drop it, somebody's got to pick it back up again. All right? And my personal opinion, this is Robert Kelly's personal opinion, when I'm called to do things, they didn't ask me to preach. Okay? I was raised in an atmosphere, it's probably different, maybe it's too rigid, but when we were called up to do things, it was take prayer needs, you encourage people how to pray, you may want to use a scripture, but I know what God was talking to me, and God this, then ten minutes later, we still haven't taken prayer needs because we're trying to listen to your sermon. And sometimes, before the preacher ever gets to the floor, we listen to three and four sermons. No. Your job is you're taking it. It's like a baton. It's like the, what do they call those runners? You have four on the team. Relay race. It's kind of like what it's like. Come on. I'm old. I've got an excuse to forget things. What's you wrong see if the Spirit tells you something different? <laughs> yeah, okay. Happened. Yeah, it has happened. And that's where you work. I mean, you begin to trust in the sense of, of like, if, if you're leading the service and you feel, I feel the Spirit would, you know, or let's be. You're going to know that. As, as pastor, I know that. Or services up in convening. And we've had a schedule. This is what we're doing. But you get up there leading prayer. God begins to... That's what it's all about. But, it, but I have found if you don't have some kind of layout, we go all over the place. We waste a lot of time. And people sometimes say that's hindering God. No, it's maximizing the time you have. That's why you pray. That's why you're sensitive to the leading of the Lord. And just... You want to be able to pass that off. So, when you're done with what you're doing, you want to be the next person to take it just a little. Keep it moving upwards until the Word. Okay? To hear the Word of God. You're building a platform. Now, I'm very much aware you could be in this service and it just... People come to the altar and get the Holy Ghost and people aren't even waiting for you to say get in the baptismal tank. They're just jumping in the tank and... You go, oh, no, 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 it's not on our service schedule. No. But see, what's happened is what you do is you create an atmosphere for the liberty of the Spirit of God. You're using time wisely. You're prayed up. You're working together as a team. You're not focused on, I'm up here to make me look good. It's just one after the other. And God does that. God does intervene at times. Like, Isn't that a great drawing? That'll sell. Anyway, but God does hear me. Now, here's another thing I noticed, too. I love to shout. I like to get excited. But it's interesting that sometimes the only time people shout is in the song service. See, I was raised where people used to shout when the word was being preached. Because this touches our soulish, our emotions. That's what I watch a lot. 
participate into. I get excited, I shout and dance. I like to see how people respond to the work. Just a thought. Just a thought. Okay? So, number, th <clears throat> number three, we're not going to get through. I don't know if we're going to get through to fill in the blanks today. So, anyway. Okay, number three, what's the purpose of the service? So, that's the next thing. You're in charge of the service. Is it a Bible study? Am I dealing with a Sunday school class? Are we in a house group? Are we promoting missions? Is it a youth service? Am I at a nursing home having service? You, you, you kind of, what, what is the, you know, it's like I told uh, the group the other day, year two. I said, now I'm coming to you. I said, um, on Wednesday afternoons, most of your congregation is older. They're over 50. Some are over 60. None of us are over 85 yet. But the, the congregation usually on Wednesday afternoon is more of a mature audience. That's a good way to say it. But I said, what's happening is you're singing a lot of the new songs, very slow, melodious songs. And I said, when you do that one after another, I said, sing songs that they identify with. Get a little pep, pep up songs. And I said, what would happen if I was going to come to a youth service and I brought in brown books or hymn books and said, we're going to sing out the hymn books. Well, you know, that really wouldn't be a good thing to do because young people are going to struggle. So you sing songs on their level. So it is with this. I said, the type of service, whatever you're going to be doing, look at the, the audience that you're going to be leading. Also, another thing to note is when you're leading a service, we can be guilty sometimes in leading a service. Um, sometimes not really understanding some of the things people are going through. Uh, I've been in services where somebody is leading songs and maybe it's just not like last service where everybody was like, woo, or there was just something you were looking for. And we're guilty of that. If God moves in a certain way that we like, we've had a move of God. Well, God will move in other ways that we may or may not. But sometimes when people walk in, Sunday morning, Bible study night, you don't know what they may have been through that week, even as believers. And so you want to lead them in worship, not push them, not hammer them into worship, but lead them. And you may say, oh, you don't love God, you're not worshiping the way. And maybe somebody just got fired. Or maybe somebody just got news from the doctor of an illness. Or maybe some family member ran into a crisis. And you don't know this stuff. So when you look across an audience and you're leading a service, ask God to help you to be sensitive. And not, not just as you see people's faces and determine whether they're spiritual or not. You never know what people are going through. Have you ever come to church some Sundays and you're ready just to sing as loud as you can and you come next week and you've been battling some things and it's just like, thank God I just made it to church. And you really don't feel like, you know, it happens. And sometimes when somebody's saying, well, come on! Tell them if you love God, do this. Well, you're there. So I have to learn when I'm leading the service. Not to, you know, in my excitement sometimes to do that, how am I going to lead them into worship? And that comes from bringing them praying and seeking God and sensitive to the leadership of the Holy Ghost. So, you know, this, this business is not just getting up and, oh, I can do the offering. Or I can do this. It's a sensitivity to people's needs and what is happening. So, anyway, that, that's a side. So, all right, the structure of the service, uh, we kind of covered that in a little way. Uh, who is, who's the leading the service? Uh, who's going to do what, when, where am I going to fit in? Um, it's a good thing to have. Okay, let's go down to uh, fill in the blank. 
Any questions or comments? Any ideas? Okay. It's a good idea what you say, right? You know, because I could come in, well, I do come in on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say I was that old group that you were talking about. No. But, <laughs> sometimes I do, I come off from night shift. Sometimes, sometimes I feel really excited. And other times I'm the one that you come to church, but I really want to go to sleep. Yeah. And I mean, you do. And it does. I think we should pray like as well. It all depends how you feel. Yeah. It does. Sometimes you're emotional. And, and there are sometimes, I just, um, you know, I'm, be, I'm being honest with you, sometimes, even as pastor, yes, I'm I'm here, but there's just sometimes, I, I tell my wife, I just love to be home sitting down tonight. You know? So if I feel that way, this is supposed to be my thing. If there's people that are out there on the jobs, and it's another thing. See, I... Okay, my task is different, but there's people out there in the workforce. Workforce. Who knows that day they may have made a statement of their faith and and they've just got hammered at work. And I know the Bible says to rejoice when you're persecuted, but maybe they're just having a bad day and man, they're hammered. They're just hit. They come to church and people don't need hammered. People need to be lifted up. People need to be encouraged. Now, sometimes I know you have to, come on, folks, let's push beyond this. Let's push beyond. There's one thing to be encouraging, and well, don't you love God? You need to raise your hands. And then sometimes, I was just in a service just recently. The guy says, let's worship God. And ten minutes later, when he got done, we could. Don't. This is really a pet peeve of mine, and my son's worse. But it, it, it's like when you say, let's worship God, well, what do you mean? Raise our hands or lead us in a song. But don't stand and talk for ten more minutes. You told me let's worship. I would, but if you'll be quiet, we can. Well, that sounds bad. I wouldn't say that, but I would. Or like, so let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer because we need to And ten minutes later. Well, if you will stop, we will. Unless the Lord is directing him to encourage but when you're saying, let's do this, and I have to stand guilty, I've done that before. Okay? But you, you be, watch and those kind of things. Elizabeth, you're getting me to chase rabbits again, but bears and squirrels and everything else. But again, you could come in, you just had a bad day at work. Um, again, that's why I say in our midweek services, our, our songs, we only sing one or two songs at the opening, you know. Something in worship, bringing people together, because we're just coming from all over the place, you know. The parents could have just come back from having a meeting with a teacher at school, and your kid is doing, it's a disaster in school what your kid is doing, you know. They come to church, and they just got this news at school. You never, never know. They haven't had a chance to say, Pastor or somebody else, I need to pray for my kid, and they're making a mess at school. They haven't had a chance. So you just, you never know. And sometimes we think we're the only ones that walk in with problems. Anyway, okay? So this business of leading in a service, it's, it, and when you're doing things like this, it gives a chance also for God to minister to people. In the worship service, in the time of prayer, God can speak and meet the need in a person's life. Um, all right. Okay, let's go back to fill in the blank. Be prepared and organized. Be prepared and organized. It is not a sin to be organized, but you don't organize God. Um, uh, okay, bless his heart, he was in here, I tell him, Jim was in here, but like one Sunday, um, a lot of people had already, excuse me, had already left for conference, uh, this was last year I think, had already left for conference, and Jim and I was left to take care of the service, and so I was having to lead worship, <laughs> 
I forget who was playing on the keyboard, and we came for prayer. And as Jim and I started praying for people, the person singing and the keyboard player, it just, one got in one key, and I don't know what the singer got into. And I'm thinking, Lord, all of this, and, you know, and we're trying to pray for people. Well, Jim, he saw I was covering the praying for people. He just came on the platform and got one of the mics and helped them get back on course. And as he did, it just like it just God just began to move. Just just it was it was you know God just really began to move in ways across the congregation, and it was like 15 minutes later, just people praying everywhere. And at that moment, I said, Jim, but I've got he's got one ear he just can't hear out of, and I happened to catch that ear that morning. I just walked over and I said, Jim, forget the offering, everything. We'll do this later. Take it, man. God's here. And I, I was wanting him, because he was speaking that morning, just to go preach, pick it up, and run with it. And you'll find that sometimes in this. Okay? You'll go from song service, and maybe something's to be next, but it's such a move of God that the pastor or whoever is convening may just look to the person who's speaking and say, take it. Now, most times you got to make sure the pastor's okay with that. But you remember that happened on Sunday? And at the last minute we had to do, before it was finished, the offering. Yeah. Everybody was good home and like, ah, the yeah. offering. Yeah. So, and, but in saying that, there was a service layout. Mm -hmm. it, okay, that just goes by the by. So, and by the way, there is, there is an anointing with unity. So when we know what we're doing, and if I lead it to this point, and Callum, he gets up to lead prayer, and it's just like there's an explosion in the Holy Ghost, go for it. You know. so, okay. Lead in worship. Okay, so the next one. Lead in worship. What I mean by that is if you're leading a song service, or leading people to lead them in worship, don't demand them to worship. Also, so I preach, but if I'm not preaching that night, I sit back in the corner somewhere. I don't agree with that. I need to be right up supporting the person speaking. If I lead in song service Sunday, and next Sunday I don't, and I'm sitting way in the back of the crowd somewhere, just setting, uh, that's not good. I don't think you should be leading worship. I think you need to be up. Not only an example when you are leading in worship, but an example to the congregation. So, I led Sunday, and Callum's leading today. I need to be right up there with him. Not up front, but I need to know that he needs to know that I'm supporting him. And by that, and participating. Not sitting in the back, well, I'm not leading worship tonight. Well, you're a worshiper. So, okay. Okay, watch the people. Watch the people. Lead the people. You lead them in worship. And that's kind of a tongue twister. But the blank is lead. You lead them in worship. Let them see you. Be a worshiper. I already said this. Be a worshiper when you're not leading. Okay. Be a worshiper when you are not leading. We've covered that. Sing out and sing lead if you are leading. Now, I will explain that. If you are the person that is the song leader that night, you lead the melody of the song. Because you're the one that the congregation is going to be following. And when you lead a congregation, the congregation needs to know what you're expecting. You may feel God, but they don't know what you're feeling. You need to, people need to know the direction you're going. So, if you're the lead singer, the congregation needs to catch the melody of the song so they can sing with you. Now, in that, in the congregation, people may sing parts. Those singing on the platform with you may, 
but as the lead singer, I sing the lead part, the melody of the song. Okay? Um, also, <clears throat> when you, you know, just when I say sing it out, you're not belting it out, you know. And that's my problem. I use a belt in it. Know the song you're going to be singing on the next page. Okay? Know the song. You should have no more than two new songs in a worship. I would even go as far as saying no more than one new song in a worship service. So by that, I would put one. You need one, let's say. You should have no more than one new song in the worship service. Um, so if I get up to lead, and it's a new song. Well, folks, I don't know this song, but we're going to try it tonight. No, it's not. No. No. Huh? Huh? I've had that. Yeah. You want to, if you want people to participate, you've got to know. And if you really want to sing it, you feel the sing it, say, man, I want to practice that before I lead again. Yes? I guess if it's not on the board, if the person who's done the computer doesn't know that song, then they're not able to put it on right. the board, so mm -hmm. then the congregation won't be able to right. sing it. Sing it because it's not on the you want to make sure it's on. Now, I have to stand guilty with that because every now and then I pull out some old ones. And I'm doing it more now than then. Uh, I keep telling them, if you don't sing a hymn in church in the service, I'm yeah. going to sing one. Yeah. So, that, and what you have to do is kind of know this may happen. If, if Elizabeth, you know, she'll have her structure. These are the four songs we're going to sing. But she may pull out one somewhere. In all fairness to the people, the musicians, and if you have AV, you need to try to give them some warning. Or, okay, my daughter, uh, my wife and my son, I used to get looks that way. I'd be up there and, and my wife would say, why do you do that? Why don't you tell us? My, my son, who played the saxophone when he was here, he says, Dad, when you do that, that's hard. And my daughter, my daughter could give looks that it would take the two of them to, to work together to give. She'd be playing and I'd say, let's sing this song. And she just, and I knew that look. She was not happy because she says, Dad, what happens when you do that? It makes your musicians look like they don't know what they're doing. And we want, we want to be able to help with the song. Not over oh, there like, ni, na, wa, e, a, pa, a, a, you know. You know. Right. So, I still do it. That's why sometimes I, okay, Elizabeth and Peyton will know now, Cal, but there's sometimes I'll just tell the musicians, no. Why I do that? I don't want them trying to find where we're going. Just sing it. Learn how to sing Sing sometimes without music because out there you're not going to have the band with you. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's just refreshing sometimes. And just let them, don't look like you're trying to embarrass them. Don't. This is on me. This is on. If this goes really well, if it goes bad, it's on me. You know? So, um, and then the other thing is about new songs. So let's say you do get a new song and you practice it and you get up and sing at one time. And why don't you people sing this? And you practice it 50 times. No. And, that, and the other thing is, in a church service and people learning new songs, it's, it's, some people aren't given to music. Some people aren't given to learning a lot of new things that quick. So be patient. You know, introduce a song. Uh, Brother Gene, was he, when he was here, I think he even said one new song a month. 